the Hever for coming. I would like, believe that there, I would like this to be, it has to be canceled. The Stam is Thursday nights. So we're going to do this. I think, I think it's a good Zach. I even want to bring one in a blue moon. I'm going to bring a Hever to sing for Reb Drash. We'll bring a choir once in a blue moon to sing for Reb Josh. But um, I want to do this Thursday night. I'll be honest that I enjoyed tremendously in the summer. I thought it was an opportunity to share fresh Torah and to try to bedafka, say new things. And for every time we've met so far has been new things. Tonight I want to ask Mechila. I'm going to say something that we've discussed before, but it's something that I feel very, very passionate about, specifically that schools are starting now. I feel like very, very strongly about this topic. This is not like something just like, you know, just to float out there, a nice vert. To me, I feel very, very passionate about this. So I'm not sharing with you a cute vert. I want to share a passion with you. And and I want to share something with the Chevre, and, and really, if the Ilma has feedback, I'd be very interested. We've done the last many weeks start with Kashas on the parasha. Maybe there are plenty on Shavtim. I've always enjoyed this parasha. There's plenty of things to ask and analyze and speak about, and we'll have other opportunities, but if there are too long of an introduction, let's get busy. A body is found murdered outside of a city. A dead body is found murdered. And the question is, who did it? Who did it? Who's guilty of this terrible crime? There's a dead body that's there. And so, you bring the culprits, you bring the possible people who are possible suspects in this crime, and you ask them, did you do it? I had a true story. A bacher in yeshiva years ago, this is not in Durham, don't get nervous, Yonatan. This happened when we were in the neighborhood we were in where the dorms used to be. And, and you know, the dorm is not in the Frum community, as you, you know, the old dorm, it's not the dorm anymore. And it wasn't in the Frum community. And a bacher was mugged and he was beaten up. I was livid. He was punched. He was really, really hurt. Take, things were taken from him. I was in a rage, not irresponsibly driving up and down the streets, trying to find the guy who did it. I just was like enraged. Hashem was good to me and I didn't find anybody. But I was very, very upset. Here the guy was punched in the face. Things were taken. I was enraged. We went to the police station very, very angry. And I was like, really, we'll get, somebody's paying for this. Somebody's this crazy guy who's punched, beaten up. The bottom line is, it's fascinating. The police put me in the police car with the Bacher, and they drove us to different places, and they shown the cop cars and different people, and they said, was it this guy? Was it this guy? It's amazing, the police know the streets, and they know their typical suspects. They know their stuff. Now, it turned out they didn't pick the right guy. The Bacher said, no, no, they didn't get the guy, but they had ideas. They had ideas, they know, they know the nature of the crime and they know who the chevr that are liable suspects. They literally shown the lights on different people. Is it this guy? Like Vaistais, he's a known, you know. He, he's thrown some punches before, he might have done some muggings. So they, they, they brought different people like that, that are suspects in their world. Over here, Rabbi Sai, the Torah Daisha, brings brings the first people that are suspects in this case. And it's rather shocking because it's Zikne Yair, it's the tzaddikim of the city. And the tzaddikim are brought for questioning, was it you? And they have to say a statement, the Zikne Yair, the chashuvim, the special people of the city, have to say, they must say, v'anu v'amru, they must proclaim, yodeinu loishavches adam azeh. We didn't do it. We're not responsible for this murder. Einenu loiro'u. We are not responsible. They must make a claim. We're not responsible. Es chazal, Rashi brings chazal. V'chi olsa alev, is it even a hava mina? V'chi olsa alev, does it even come on the heart? Shazikne Bezdin Shoivchidamim? 
Is there a thought? You have like this elderly tzaddik, you have the tzaddikim of the city, and they're the first suspects, the lights of the cap. Can you imagine my shock? If the police brought us for the suspects of this bacher and they shine the light on the local rabbanim, they say, is this the guy who did it? <laughs> and the Torah shines the light on the ziknaya ear and the ziknaya of the ear have to proclaim we didn't do it. Es chazal v'chi olsa aleim sheziknei bezden shoyv chidam Ella says the Gemara, we never let him leave without we fed and we did levaya to this man. He was fed and he had levaya. There are three obligations to guests. Achila shesia, to eat and drink, and levaya, to accompany a guest when they leave. We never didn't do levaya. We never didn't feed him, we never didn't do levaya. There's something here that's profound that the Torah is saying that I think is so crucial for us is so vital for us. It very much frustrates me, it very much frustrates me when we ask people things that they can't keep. Sometimes a Rebbe will demand of Talmidim, there's not enough geschmack in learning, there's not a, as if like the guy can press a button and have more geschmack in learning, are you making an environment that somebody can enjoy the learning? The picture of a guy comes to your house, 50 people walk into your house, and you say, I say, sit down, please, please. You, don't have, you only have two seats. No, no, please, please sit down, please. Sit down. <laughs> you could say as many times as you want, please sit down, but you only have two seats. You're saying to 50 people, please sit down. It bothers when we look at Bahram and we say unity. Why don't you get along? Why don't you get along? Because there are conditions necessary for unity. You know how many times, I promise you, a few weeks ago, a parent told me, I'm so scared to send you my son. Another bacher bullied him, who's in yeshiva. He's in yeshiva by you now, and their previous yeshiva he bullied him. I just laughed. I told her, I'll swear on Sifrei Torah, my yeshiva, he won't bully you. I'll swear. I would swear on the Sifrei Torah, he won't bully him in our yeshiva. An environment creates a certain situation. If people are not given the space, the love, the warmth, the nurture, they need yet people bully each other. The environment creates certain behaviors. And it bothers me with demand. When you say unity, unity, chevr, let's get along. It's very nice. You could say it as many times as you want, but you have no chairs for people to sit on. It doesn't help. Say sit. It doesn't help. You can't give a speech, get along, if you don't have the... What environment's necessary for people to get along? What environment is that everybody counts is important. If you're the head of a school and in your world there's the Spitzbacher, there's the good boy, and they all fight who's the best good boy, how can you then from the other side of your mouth say, why don't we all get along? Because you've made an environment that not everybody counts is important. You made the next boy my competition, the next person. And then you have the audacity to say, achtos, unity. You haven't created the environment that promotes unity. And the Torah Toisha sees a dead body. It is no joke that the ziknei or ear have to speak about the crime. It's, it's wild. The lights go, the police shine the lights on the ziknei or ear. And they say, are they guilty? And the ziknei or ear have to take, and they have to say we're not responsible. Because we did levaya. Levaya is as follows. And I want to, I spoke about this opening night in Yeshiva, and I want to share this with you. I want to ask three caches. First of all, it says, Hashem's goymel chasadim toivim. So clearly there's bad kindness. Because if Hashem does good kindness, there has to be there's something called bad. What's bad kindness? Kasha two. Kasha two is that it says, chasad umim chatas. The kindness of nations is sinful. What's a sinful kindness? What is that? Sinful kindness? Kasha 3. When we were little kids, it was very nice. Sedaim was a country against kindness. We're getting more sophisticated. You ever met somebody against kindness? I'm against kindness. He's a Meshuggah. So we were little. It was very cute. <laughs> They're against kindness. It's very cute. When we're older, if the Torah speaks about a bad nation and there's something to learn from it, 
They're not just Meshugayim, sickos, and we all chuckle. They're against, if you do Achmas Asarachim, they killed you. You got killed, you got beaten up, you got lashes. So they were stunned crazy. They weren't crazy at all, Sadaim. The kindness of nations is pity. The kindness of Goyim that is often there, not always, that's chatas, that the smartest man called a sin. And this is the opposite of chasad and toivim, is a kindness that comes from pity. I see this a lot in people who call themselves liberal. They are not from Avram Avinu. They're not the liberal of the Torah. There is a, is a kindness that is born from pity. Somebody, the unfortunate, the less successful, the less capable. Be nice, you special person, be nice. That is bad kindness. It's a kindness that destroys, that puts down, that mocks. And I think to myself, if you ever play baseball and there's somebody who's a special needs child, it's so applaudable to let him hit a home run. It's nice. And you overthrow first base and he runs to second. You over if somebody would do that to a kid who's not special needs, it's, it's ridiculous. Show him how to play baseball. Show him what he's good at. Show him what he's not good at. I don't try to manipulate in yeshiva. We, have, we, we take sports way too seriously. I don't try to manipulate it. No, let the guy do I don't try to do that. We're going to find your strength and yours and yours. Because kindness that it comes from pity, kindness that comes from disrespect, chatas is sinful, puts down and destroys. You see, we come from Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu's kindness came because he was dazzled from people. Avram who saw three people who the regular person would see as over there, Avay Dezara, he said, Adonai, my master, L'Gadol Shabem. He said to the biggest one, you're my master. The words of the Torah are real. He looked at him and he said, I'm impressed with you. He said, there's something about you that I feel lower than you. My master. He looked up to him. In some way, every word of the Torah is true. And Avram looked him in the face and said, my master, it means I'm humble to you. And the kindness that's our legacy from Avram, Sadaim was against kindness. I don't know that we're not against the kindness Sadaim was against. Sadaim didn't know of another kindness. A kindness that comes from respect. It's the kindness of God. Hashem sees a human being, and has love and haracha and value of a person. In Hashem's tefillin, like in our tefillin, it says, Hashem alakenu Hashem echad. In Hashem's tefillin, it says, Mika Yisrael. Koyechad ba'ar, it's a precious people. Hashem's kindness, it's called gemilus chasad, and gemul means what you deserve. Ahashiv gemulay b'reshe. Gemilus chasadim is a contradictory term. Al shloish advar ma'olam oimet. Torah avoid the gemilus chasadim. The word gemilus chasadim is a contradiction. Chesed is kindness. Gemol means schar. Oilam hab is called an oilam ha gemol, a world of schar. Schar means I earned it. It's payment. How can you have gemilus chasadim? Be goimel chesed. Gemol is to give somebody what they deserved. Chesed is what they don't deserve. If I pay you your wages, is that called kindness? I, if you pay, you buy something at the store, in your great kindness you pay, you owe it. But gemilus chasadim is the kindness of Hashem. I so, I'm so impressed with you. I push it, feel I owe it to you. I want to give it to you. You deserve it. It comes to you. It's the opposite of a kindness from pity. It's a kindness that, could you please take from me? You know, the Gemara Kedushin speaks about that you can marry a lady with Kesev. If a guy is an Adam Chashev, a Chashev, a person, she can give him money, and he's married to her because he gave her something that he accepted her money. That's Chesed. Chesed is, you amazing person, if you take from me, I'll be delighted. If you take from me, I'll be delighted. Because you're so precious, you're so good. It's just my honor to serve you. We all know G'dayim. Somebody asked of Chaim Knievsky, could I drive you somewhere? The guy would pay money for the rights to drive Reb Chaim. Because he has a haracha, he has a value for an Adam Gadol. It's his chost. Reb Chaim, can I drive you somewhere? That is the obligation, that's the legacy of kindness we have from Avram Avinu. That Adonai, my master, we don't read it honestly enough. We don't read the Torah. We want, we, we're very sophisticated. We need like fancy perushim, 
Can we stop and read the words? You know what Avram Avinu, our father, said to them? He said, my master, I beg you, I'll not sovereign my of death, I beg you. Let's just read, translate the words. I'll not sovereign my of death, I'm so taken by you. Could you please, I plead with you, just the words of the term, my master, you who I see so much in you, could you, I beg you, it's just my honor, I beg you, I need to do this for you. The chesed of Avram is a kindness that Stoim couldn't imagine. They were against the kindness that destroys people. They weren't stupid. They just didn't know about the kindness of Hashem. And that we can mirror the kindness of Hashem. That we are capable of being impressed with the Tzelem Elikim, of being taken by a person and saying, I want to serve you, I want to do for you. You're, 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 you're a Yid, you're a Ben Melech, I want to serve you. We're Shaykh to the kindness of Avram Avinu. The elders of the city are the suspects. The question is, what type of environment did you create? And the environment causes all the behaviors in the environment. A, a teacher can look and say, they're bullying, what's going on? And you could have every bullying campaign. And you bring all the specialists and show all the videos. But did you create an environment that everybody's respected? Do you know in a family, you know what you could do for your kids when we respect, Rev Hirsch called it the bedrock of Chenech that we respect, we mechabit our children. That each child is so precious and important. The kids know, you think Baruch can't do any wrong. They look at their dad, you think he, she's Chan is so perfect. The dad has such a value and respect for all his children. The, the child's precious and innocent and good and holy and just wonderful. Not, we're not stupid. Everybody has flaws. But they're so good. They're so precious, so important. That's an environment of respect. Of course, when they're young, they fight. A kid's fight is normal, healthy, and important. But the respect they grow up, families like that, when they're in their 20s, 30s, 50s, 80s, a deep, profound respect the siblings have. It comes from the view of the parents, from the sense and value of each one's important. Each one has a place, each one has such a position in the family. The elders of the city are questioned, and the lights go on them when there's a murder in the city. The also Alev that the Zikne Yair did the murder and the answer is that if it's not a city where people are respected, where there's Levaya. Levaya is that not just that everybody's physical needs are cared for. Achila and Shesia means you care for your guests. The question what type of kindness is, are you Avram Avinu? Avram was Eshel Avram, Achila, Shesia and Levaya. The question of Avram Avinu and the difference is do you do Eish or Eishel? Eish is destroys, it's a fire. And it says that cities are burnt, that practice, Achilu Shesiyah, not Levaya. When I was a youngster, I thought they have two out of three, what's so bad? Their kindness is bad. Their kindness. It would be better they wouldn't do Achilu Shesiyah. Sedaim is right. Yeah, Sedaim is right. Oh, of course they're right. It would be better. Kindness like that is destructive. A kind, would you want, would you want your son who's capable of playing baseball, would you want, would any father, you'd be upset. Said, we let him hit a home run, we threw it over the bases. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's a chilish without levaya. Eating and drinking is taking care of a person's needs. But do you respect? Do you appreciate? A chilish without levaya's ash, a fire consumes the city. It's not just missing one aspect, it's a different kindness. It's the kindness that comes from pity, from saying something, because you don't do levaya. Levaya is your respect. When they leave, you walk out a whole posse, a whole like, a whole, this, this, this person's big stuff. Levaya is they get walked to the car, they get walked out, there's a whole procession, there's a person of honor. The question is, do you do levaya? is a profound question on what type of kindness you practice. If you eat and drink, of course, people have needs. But if you don't respect, so then all the nebuchs are invited for Achille and Shaseya. Levaya says you're somebody precious and important. You count. You're chashev. And then it's a different Achille and Shaseya. 
And the zikne are here in order to proclaim an innocence, have to say we foster an environment that every single person in the city is respected. So then, and only then, can they say they're innocent of the crime. If in their city people aren't respected, then the zikne ha'ir are very much responsible for a murder. Of course, they didn't press the pistol, but they created an environment. In their environment, there was the haves and the have-nots. There were the goodies and the baddies. There were the people worthy of respect and the unrespectables. And the zikne ha'ir are certainly those that create the environment. And as such, for the zikne ha'ir to wash their hands and say, we didn't do this crime, they have to be able to say, Im anu amru to proclaim loudly that we make an environment of respect. It's an environment where each person is valuable and important. Levaya is practice. Nobody wasn't taken care of, but there was levaya as well. There was achila. There was Achille in our city, we've cared for people, and there was Levaya also, people were respected. Certainly we set up kindness as Yidin, we set up, and Yidin, Mika Amcha Yisrael, organizations of kindness to take care of. But we must practice Levaya as well, because our kindness is such, a, a Yiddish Mishpacha, a person, is valued and appreciated. It was interesting. A kid, I had a question, over Pesach, I went to a question and answer. And, and there was this question and answer session, they do at the hotels, these cute kind of things. And a youngster, a young Lubavitch Hasan, a beautiful boy, he was like 15 years old, and angrily he asked that you, Litvaks, I don't know how he said it, but he said you have from and not from, could you explain me the guidelines? Now he wasn't asking for halachic discourse, what's called fromenat. It wasn't what this, this beautiful Bachar was saying. He was giving such good musr. He was asking, do you respect Yedin? And I explained to the tzibur, turn around and look at this young man, that he respects Yedin. And he's really giving musr. This wasn't the question, it was a statement. He's saying, respect Yedin. So I said, I don't answer such thing. I just want to announce, Rabbi say, I stand with this youngster, this precious youngster. Let's respect Yedin, Rabbi say. I was masking. I was masking. Let's respect Yedin. He's right. Let's respect Yedin, Rabbi say. That's what he was saying. It wasn't the question. He wanted to give a shear. And his question, he, I would give to a shear. Let's respect Yedin. And this is the zikne ear's responsibility and obligation. It's to promote an environment where a person is respected and appreciated. Every person is valuable and counts and is important. I have a tremendous pride. I love where we live. And I think this is a place that's lahafli, that's off the charts at this. One family after another, you can, you can single out everybody here. But I think we can't rest on our laurels. We can never just say we have it and go to sleep. A mezarzin el mezurazin. You strengthen those that are strong at things. And this is something we, wanna, we, want, we want a revolution of this. The respect, the covet to a yid. Be'chaloi kuloi oimer covet. And the heichel Hashem is all about honor, covet, respect and appreciation. So I say, let us be mechazek at this time that our children are going back to yeshivas. And this time when they're becoming, they leave our house, they're in our house always. But it's the end of the summer, they're going back to school. And in school there are many. And it's a time that it becomes a challenge of Klal Yisrael, that each one is precious. Kulam l'shem yisikro. Everyone has a name, everyone's important, everyone's valuable. And I say to us, well, let's be mechazek, as the zikne ha'ir, who don't want to be guilty of any murder. It's our achrayis to create such a sense. Children, the children of the Jewish people are good. The Jewish people are good. I remember a girl sat with my wife and I. A girl asked if she could meet with me. I have a policy with my wife and me. Sarah Mekarebis Sanoshim. I got a text. I had a blue. I got a text. Do you talk to girls? I was wondering, like, such a personal question, like, do you talk to, I show my wife a text, do you talk to girls? It turned out it was a girl asking if she could have a meeting. <laughs> I was wondering, who's, like, checking me out, a rival yeshiva wants to, like, see if they could, I don't know, the local papers want some dirt, I, do you talk to girls? So, <laughs> I have a daughter, I have a wife, Baruch Hashem. But as far as, as far as this girl, so my policy, I meet with my wife. 
So we met this girl and she said, she, she was describing, and I've heard this from others, that my teacher made me feel like I'm a bad person. The teacher didn't do it on purpose. But what went on, she was one of the bad, you're a wonderful person, a wonderful tzaddikist. She was made to feel like a bad person for no reason. And Ara Christ, a yid is good, a yid is good, a yid is to be respected. And this is something that we should be zeichet, to be part of such a revolution, all of us. A revolution of the covet of a yid, of the dignity and pride. To me, the greatest messiah of our day, to me, I would, I would love to, to debate anybody on this. The greatest Nisayan of our day is shame, a sense that we are shamed, a, a sense a Yid has, I'm not precious. I think it's the greatest challenge of today, the greatest. More than any crisis we speak about, that's my personal opinion, is that the crisis of today is a sense of the Jewish people is shamed, that so many people feel puzzled. We, Hashem set up in the Sionis. We live in an age, a lot of exposure, and people feel shame, I'm puzzled. That's a, a sense that's prevalent, that's rampant in the Jewish people. And the only answer is a revolution of Aramas Karen Yisro, a restoration of Jewish pride, of Jewish dignity, a sense, and yet is precious. And I ask us, as the Ziknei are here, as people that are coming to learn and tire together on a Thursday night, really late, I ask that let's be Mechazik, Rabbi saying this Enyan. Let us be able to say, to wash our hands from difficult times, and say we're not responsible for bad things happening, but Fakert, we're going to be Mechayim We're going to bring people back. We're going to bring people back alive. Let us be mechazik, Rabbi saying the covet of every single year. It starts always, and we speak about chesed, our children are first. Our wives and children are first. Covet, respect. Let us be mechazik in this revolution of covet, and we should see a restoration of our Ramas Karim Yisrael, Mayor of Yemen. Amen.